Hi everybody, uh, once again this is Zeri, Persian pen name on AO3, here to read you some stories. I might forget what week I'm on in my transition, but the number will be on my videos, so that's good enough. Uh, what's been going on this week? I'm not sure if I mentioned last week, I, I hit six months, my prescription ran out, and so I had to see the doctor again, so I saw her yesterday. Um, since I have not had <clears throat> a whole lot of face and vocal changes, um, she did say my, my cheek fuzz is feeling a little stiffer, but that's about it, uh, that I should go on a higher dose, and since the compounding pharmacy that I had been using had switched the number of clicks to release a dose, um, without warning, and so I didn't notice until after I had taken the last of mine, so I don't know for how long I was taking half of a very low dose. Uh, so because of, you know, all of these kind of reasons, I decided, well, I'm gonna switch to injections. Um, because, you know, that way I know exactly how much is in there, I only have to do it as it turns out, once every two weeks, because I'm doing intramuscular. And also, y'all, these vials are so cute and tiny. They're, they're so wee. I love it. It's so small. It's just so tiny. Uh, and they are, they're only like a third full. They only have one milliliter in there. So now I'm taking one milliliter once every two weeks. Pardon and I did my first shot yesterday, by which I mean I had a lot of anxiety and I psyched myself out and then I ended up asking my darling spouse, who is still over here, um, if he would inject me. He's waving. Y'all can't see it, but he's waving. Uh, so I was really worried it was gonna hurt and I didn't realize, like, the needle is pretty long and it's gotta go, like, all the way in. I thought it was gonna be, oh, you just keep boop, you know, no, it goes all the way in. Um, so yeah, I was a total wuss, but it didn't hurt. I was very surprised by that. Uh, I'll probably continue to ask him to do my injections for at least a little bit. Uh, just cause, you know, I will continue to be a wuss. So let's see what else has been going on. Uh, Supposed to go to San Antonio today, but our well is acting up. Uh, the well water's being weird. No pressure and such, so. We're doing that instead. That's fun. Rural living. Yay. Um, I've done some more dyeing. I have temporarily given up on the quest for brown. Um, because I was supposed to have like four more pounds of wool and silk that was going to come in. Uh, I ordered it the 8th of last month. Didn't hear from the seller. I've used the seller before. Um, didn't hear from them at all. Ended up emailing them on the 18th being like, hey, I sure would like that, that wool I bought. Um, it's like 70 bucks, so I'm sure would like that. Uh, I got, they sent a shipping label on the 20th, but like had a tracking number and never said they actually shipped it. So I messaged them back the end of last month. No, I guess, yeah. So I messaged them back at the end of last month. I was like, hey, it's creeping up on 30 days. I sure would like, you know, that wool I bought that you got the shipping label for. Uh, no response at all that time. So I ended up having to dispute the transaction. I don't care for that. Um, cause you know, I, I wanted the wool. I wanted to dye some stuff. So this last week I dyed up a bunch of blue green silk. It was the last of my undyed silk. Then I did a big batch of what I thought was going to be a complementary green. Um, but it ended up a lot brighter than I had intended. Uh, not bad, but very bright, so I'll probably 
use that with something else, maybe with that al uh, Angora that I did in the chartreuse. Um, and right now I've got cooking the last of my undyed biffle uh, in what I'm hoping will be a dusky purple. We'll see how it turns out. So that's what I've been doing this week. And now it is time to read a story. So I did add a whole bunch more stories to my list so that I can, you know, have more things coming up. So I believe I've read from this person before, either that or I just have them on my bookmarks and I've read their stories before. But this is another original work. Um, it is titled Smoke and Fire by a Sassy Snow Person. The relationship is experienced poli paro uh, police officer slash up-and-coming supervillain, enemies with a deep respect for each other, and opposing philosophies on how to do good. It was written for Psychomachia, for the Bulletproof 2021 exchange, based on the prompt rivals slash enemies with sig significant age gaps and deep respect for each other. So that sounds cool. I haven't actually read this one yet, but I, like, I don't know, looks good. I'm gonna read it. There we go. Going in blind. All right. It was a good thing Matthew hadn't been planning on retiring anytime soon. 20 years with the new Polis Police Department next Tuesday. Just about time for him to cut and run with a de decent pe pension, if he was the sort. If he had decided to retire, this would have been a cliched tragedy. Cop killed dramatically days before retirement. Instead, this was just a tired workhorse meeting his end. The villain of the week, an out-of-towner, overblown with a fire motif, had some sort of napalm gun, gun leveled at his head. I know you have a police override. Tell me the codes, he snarled, looking from Matthew to the locked door behind him, where the wealthy family had themselves shut up in their safe room, crying mother and two little girls. Matthew had stalled Flame Guy, not his actual villainous name, but Matthew didn't care, long enough to get them enough time to shut the door, and that was all he could do. I'll see you in hell, Matthew snarled. Wasn't a bad last line, as far as those things went. Maybe a little cliched, but what could you do? He faced down the gun and waited for the heat to come. Oh, darling, a bright voice chimed. What sort of a pickle have you gotten yourself into? Who dares intrude? Flame Guy sw swung his head around for Matthew for a second, and fuck it, if he was going down, he was going down fighting. He dodged left and tackles flame t tackled Flame Guy's midsection. But there was a whoosh, a gray blur, and his arms closed around empty air. On the other end of the room, a window shattered, and there was nothing but screams as a gray and orange blur flung itself out the window. Flame Guy screamed on the way down. Stay in there, Matthew ordered, because the safe room probably had an intercom, and limped his way over to the window. There was an orange smear on the sidewalk, and Flame Guy wasn't moving. No sign of gray. Terribly clumsy, that one, the bright voice said, softly whispered into Matthew's ear. Matthew didn't jump. He was used to it by now. He just slowly turned, glaring at the gray form behind him. Smoke shade, Matthew said, trying to keep the crashing terror of death and the adrenaline of life out of his voice. What are you doing here? Oh, you know what they say. Where there's fire, there's smoke. The figure flung up an arm in triumph. The edges of his fingertips shimmered, moving so fast they looked like nothing so much as campfire smoke. Pretty sure that's the other way around, Matthew said, looking down. You had beef with him? Yes, Smoke sa Smokeshade said, seriously. That's a hell of a tongue twister. He took a step in and grabbed Matthew's chin, forcing Matthew to look at him. He was about to kill you. You've tried to kill me. More than once, Matthew pointed out, half wondering if he was about to follow Flame Guy out the window. Exactly, Smoke, Sh Smoke Shade said. You're mine to kill, darling. Nobody gets to hurt you except for me. 
Matthew felt something shiver in his chest as he looked at those serious dark gray eyes, the same color as Smokeshade's uniform. Matthew had always privately found it a compelling touch. Shutting that thought to the back of his hind, hind brain where it belonged, he asked, So is that what's going down today? Smokeshade's gray eyes rolled. He released Matthew's chin. The drama. No, darling. When we fight, we do it properly. When you're trying to uphold an oppressive system by opposing my just fight for the liberation of societies unwanted. Not like this. Not to kidnap two little girls because their father happens to be the CEO of Booker and Stone. Matthew grunted. Kidnapping. That made sense as a motive. Booker and Stone was one of those big companies that owned half the world. Valuable kids. Paperwork is going to be a bitch on this one, he muttered, mostly to himself. You didn't even know, did you, who their daddy was? You just saw kids you needed to protect. That's why I like you so much, Matthew. You're a good man. It's too bad you've sold your soul to uphold the authoritarian state. Matthew shook his head. Better than trying to burn the world down. It was an old argument, and he didn't have any hope of winning it this time. Have a little faith. I'm more strategic than that, my dear. You'll see. Smokeshade Smoke shade shrugged. Or you won't. I hope you do, though. His voice was strangely wistful at the end, and he sounded young. Matthew had never had a firm grip on Smokeshade's smoke age, but early twenties, probably? He had that energy. He had come on the scene just a couple years ago, quick and clever, and determined to topple power to build something better. It was an idealistic sort of show. His methods were fucked, but Matthew had to admire his spirit. Admired him, really. Of all the villains and heroes that wound their way through New Polis, pardon, Smokeshade was the one that cared the most about collateral damage. Just last week, there had been a major fight between the great powers that be that had toppled a retirement home before the fighting moved offshore. Matthew had been there, trying to coordinate the desperate dig through the rubble, when he had been grabbed and quite literally whisked around a corner, fighting himself face to face with Smokeshade. There's seven still alive, but they're failing fast. They're in the northeast corner of the building. I can get them out fast enough, but only if some harebrained officer with more bullets than sense doesn't shoot me as soon as I start moving. They won't hit me, of course, he said with his customary arrogance, but they might hit Granny, and that would be a shame. I'll fake a life sign on the other side of the building, Matthew had said without hesitation. Sure enough, five minutes after he had gotten the area cleared, there was a tap on his shoulder, a gray blur, and seven shaky but alive elderly people now blinking at him, confused on a street corner. Smokeshade was definitely a criminal, but he wasn't a villain, as near as Matthew could tell. Thank you, he said, before Smokeshade could disappear again. For saving your life? Don't get used to it, handsome, but you're welcome anyway. Smokeshade winked and waggled his fingers at Matthew, slowed down enough that Matthew could catch the gesture. Matthew shook his head. For that and, um, last week. Matthew darted a look over at the safe room door, hoping that was enough to warn Smokeshade not to incriminate them. Then Matthew inclined his head, a show of respect. Smokeshade blurred out of existence, then reappeared right in front of Matthew, grabbing the front of Matthew's shirt. Another blurred shift, and his head was right next to Matthew's ear. Thank you for trusting me enough to let me save them. We're on the same side when it comes to the innocent. If you ever want to explore a more direct way of helping them, quit the force. You're a wonderful en enemy, but you'd make a better partner. And then Smokeshade turned his head, so those lips that had been whispering near Matthew's ear were pressed softly against the joint of jaw and neck. Matthew shuddered. He should stop this. He was probably twice the kid's age. He should just move away. Move any, any second now. Matthew's hand came up to close over Smokeshade's hand on his shirt, squeezing slightly. Mmm, Smokeshade purred, and then he whispered again. Or we could have a different sort of fun, I suppose. 
Not now, though. I'd bet less. I'd, I'd best let you go, so you can get the darling heiresses out of their cage, and let them know the brave police officer saved the day. But I will see you again, darling, soon. And maybe we'll continue this fascinating exchange. And then Matthew's hand was jerked back, and Smokeshade blurred out of the room again, and was gone. Matthew shook his head, and ran his fingers through his hair as he stood out the doorway where Smokeshade where he, as he stared out the doorway where Smokeshade had vanished. Right. He was too fucking old for this. He could still feel the ghost of a kiss lingering along his jaw as he made his way back to the safe room door and called, I think we're clear, but let me sweep the place and get some backup, just in case. Just to be safe. The end. Okay, so that one was a lot of fun. I'm really glad that the deep voice did not last for very long, because I don't know what I was thinking going with that. Uh, the very dramatic voice was a lot of fun, and I'm probably going to do something lo something like that again. Uh, let's see, anything else going on? Oh wow, this is a really short video, it's only like 16 minutes so far. Yeah, I think that's it for this week. Um, everybody have fun, be good cause good trouble. Happy Pride and fuck turfs. All right. Bye.